Well, we finally got to the video where we talk about Lebesgue measure. And let me tell you something. If so far you have been watching all the videos in the reproduction list, you're going to be very happy because you'll probably understand Lebesgue measure very well. And at the same time, very disappointed because Lebesgue measure is so simple. You will feel like all the knowledge you have is going to be completely wasted. But let me assure you, it's not. So, if you were following the reproduction list, then you know that if I give you a function f that is right continuous and increasing, from this function, you can build a pre-measure mu0 and an algebra a. This algebra, remember, was formed with only h intervals. Those were the empty set, the half open intervals, and the a infinity. And once you have a pre-measure defined on an algebra, you know you can define an outer measure. And we have the theorem that told us, well, when you define this outer measure, this algebra A will be contained in the set M of mu star measurable sets. And now with this M, that's a sigma algebra, you can define a measure mu. So when you do all this path, you, from a function f, you are able to get a measure and a sigma algebra. And about the sigma algebra, well, you know that this set A is a subset. And this set A is actually very nice because it's formed with all the H intervals. So how do we use all this to define Lebesgue measure? And now is when you will be very disappointed. So Lebesgue measure is the measure obtained with all this, taking f of x to be equal to x. I know, I know, it sounds so simple. So we did all this just so that I could tell you Lebesgue measure is the usual way of measuring things in the real line? Well, yes, I, we did. We did do all that. But as I said, it was worth it. Because if I give you some random set, some set A in the real line, A could be not only an interval, A could be a union of intersections of, I don't know, something very, very complicated. And I ask you to give me the measure of the set A. Well, if you follow the reproduction list, maybe you have no idea how to calculate the measure. But there are some things that you can say about A. The first thing that you would be asking yourself if you saw the videos is, well, is A in my sigma algebra M? This means, is A measurable? Can I actually measure A? Do I have the right to say mu of A? Can I say this? Is this something that exists? If the answer is yes, then, well, good news, you can calculate the measure. But if A is very complicated, then I have no idea how to calculate the measure. Because just knowing that it's defined with this function, then mu is going to be the infimum over f of a sub j minus f of p sub j, where a sub j and b sub j are covers of my set a, and then I'm restricting it to the set of measurable sets, so it's very complicated. You're obviously not going to use, unless you're in a very particular situation, you won't be using the definition. But we know a few more things about the measure. We know that it's Borel regular, and we saw that in the previous video. We know that we can approximate the measure of any set a as an infimum with compact sets or with open sets that cover it. So maybe you cannot calculate exactly the measure of A, but you can approximate it. So that's close enough. Well, so we have Lebesgue measure, it's going to be defined like this, and we are actually going to call it M. So this is Lebesgue measure in the real line. This can then be extended to Rn, but we will see that in later videos. And so it's time for us to ask ourselves, okay, well, what is this sigma algebra M? Because again, if I give you some random set, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is this set in my sigma algebra? And well, let's talk a bit about what M is. And when we think about sigma algebras, we have to think about a few examples. And the first thing that comes to mind is maybe M is parts of the real numbers. 
if you're answering yes to this question, then stop right now and go watch the video about Vitalizet. And if you have seen that video, then you know that the answer to this is no. M will not be parts of the real numbers, because we saw that if we wanted consistency, then the axiom of choice gave us a restriction, because we had contradictions. So we were going to restrict our measures not to measure every possible set, but to measure some smaller set called a sigma algebra, and that's where everything started. So no, m is not part of the real numbers. And actually the answer to what is m is right here when we build the Lebesgue measure. We have a function f that's going to be f of x equal to x. We know that the algebra a formed with the a infinity or the a b, the h intervals and the empty set, unions of these sets, is an algebra. And obviously these sets or the unions of these sets will be in our sigma algebra m. And in this step, when we go from the outer measure, because remember that outer measures were defined in parts of the real numbers. So in this step, when we go from the outer measure to the measure, we took the outer measure and restricted it to the sigma algebra of mu star measurable sets. And so what is this sigma algebra? Well, m is just the Lebesgue measurable sets. But don't worry, this that may seem very weird, we have no idea how to know if a set is Lebesgue measurable other than using the definition. Well, let me put your mind at ease. Let's first going to use this notation, the Lebesgue measurable sigma algebra is going to be this fancy L. Well, it turns out that the Borel sigma algebra in the real line is a subset of L. And so once we have the Borel sigma algebra, then we know a lot of sets that are measurable. We know that open intervals, unions of open interval, closed intervals, all those sets will be measurable. If you don't remember about the Borel sigma algebra, we have a video on that as well. And sometimes in a few applications, people even talk about Lebesgue measure to talk about the Lebesgue measure restricted to the Borel sigma algebra. So whenever you grab a new book, just make sure what definition they're working with. And now let's remember what we talked about in the video about Vitali set. We said that we wanted consistency. And we did all these things about building measures to have consistency. So Lebesgue measure has to be consistent. And it obviously is because it's the measure we have been using every day. I mean, the Lebesgue measure of a set AB of an interval is obviously going to be B minus A because it will be F of B minus F of A, but F is equal to X. So this is equal. So if we have a set E that's on the sigma algebra, that means it is a Lebesgue measurable set, then let's just use the notation E plus S is going to be all the sets of E plus S, where E is an element in the set E. So basically, we're just translating our set horizontally. And we will use R times E to say the set of all the r times e, where e is in our set e. So we are enlarging our set. Well, Lebesgue measure, as we said, is consistent. So the measure of the set e is equal to the measure of e plus s for any s, a real number, and the measure of r times e is equal to the absolute value of r times the measure of e. And I'm not going to do the proof because it's very simple, but what basically this is telling us is if we have the measure of the interval, for example, 0, 2, this is the measure of 2 times the interval 0, 1. 
and so using the second property this is going to be two times the measure of the zero one and the measure of the zero one we know how to calculate it i mean we also know how to calculate zero two but just to, to use it an, as an example is two times one minus zero which is equal to two and something important about the back measure is that the measure so i have x, some real number, the measure of the singleton x, so the set formed only with this element, is equal to zero. And this is actually simple to calculate when we use the definition. But now because it's a measure, then the measure of countable disjoint sets is equal to the sum of the measures. So for example, I can write the natural numbers as the union over all the x natural numbers of the singletons x and all the sets are disjoint because they are the element 1, the element 2 and so on. So the measure of n is well the measure of this union and as I said the measure of a disjoint union is the sum of the measures. So this is going to be the sum over all the x that are natural numbers of the measures of the singletons. And so because all of these are zero, then we have that this is going to be the sum of zero. And this is obviously zero. So the natural numbers have measures zero, and the same can be done for any countable set. So immediately we get that the measure of the rational numbers is also zero. And because the real numbers can be written as a disjoint unions, as irrationals, union rationals, then we get that the measure of the irrationals has to be infinity because that is obviously the measure of the real numbers. And so this brings up the question, if a set has the cardinality of the continuum, so that is, has the same cardinal as the real numbers, is the Lebesgue measure of that set necessarily positive? We will answer this question in the next video.